Five, four, three, two, one, go. Okay, cool. Oop, mass is on stream, my bad. I don't even know how mass is on stream. Oh, because I said new <laughs> setup. Hello everyone, um, I'm not streaming 99 I've never actually done any kind of marathon for massive organizations. Like, I've attended many GDQs and I've heard about ESA and I was in intending on planning to go to one this year, but just was not in the cards. Being all the way in Europe, not exactly accessible <laughs> for lots of other people over in here in America. But I'm glad to be on. So, okay, glad to be here. Uh, this is Banjo Kazooie. I'll be running 100%, which in the Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Kazooie community, means that you will get 100 notes, um, nine or 100 jiggies, 900 notes, and 24 empty honeycombs. Uh, you do not have to get all of the mumbo tokens. You don't have to uh, hit all the witch switches or anything like that. It's only thing the things that are in the view totals menu that are important. So, for example, we used to make it so you had to do every picture frame, and that would include the double health at the end of the game before the final boss fight, but it was eventually decided it's not in the view totals menu, so it's actually not important anymore. So, <clears throat> Those are the main collectibles you have to do. What's up, Hustle? How are you doing? Have you enjoyed the event? Game seems fun. Does anyone need me to lower the game volume or mic volume or anything like that? This is pretty much identical to the setup that I do on my stream. Volume levels and everything. Sorry. I mean, <laughs> not only have I never done any of these kind of big uh, speedrun events, I've also never uh, done one from home on top of that. <laughs> yes, all the gold sculptures are very important. As are all the coins in the level. So, if anyone has any questions about the game, I'm more than happy to help explain. Uh, this is mainly uh, what I stream on my channel. I do a lot of speedruns. And I've been doing this for quite some time now. <clears throat> we knew it for about a little over a year. But there was actually recently a glitch that was discovered called Furnace Fun Moves, where when you actually, I didn't do it on stream because it takes eh, about like five or six minutes to do. And to be honest, it also is RNG based on how quickly you can get it done. So it could take as quickly as five minutes. It could take as long as 10 minutes. Basically what you need to do um, as you can see, I'm in Talent Trot, and that means I successfully did the glitch. In order to pull it off, what you need to do is go into another file. Um, I'm in File 3 right now, and you can go to File 1 or File 2. And what you want to do is go to Furnace Fun and deplete all of your lives so you have zero lives. And then you are going to go onto one of the minigame squares on Furnace Fun, which is the ones that will either make you, you know, race vile, or have to kill the TNT box, and all those different things. And if you actually, oops, too fast. If you actually die and deplete all your health in there, then and and get a game over. If you skip out of the cutscene that plays, when you open up a new file, all of the moves that are known on the previous file get transferred over to the third file playing. So. That makes it so once you enter Mumbo's Mountain, all the moves are transferred over. So right now I have, you know, Talon Trot, I have Beak Buster, I have all these different moves. We get all of the moves, except for Flying, Egg Shooting, and Gold Feathers. We actually don't get Egg Shooting or Flight, because when you learn those moves, Bottle gives you 50 Blue Eggs and 25 Red Feathers. And it's actually faster to sit there and talk to him and learn the moves than it would be to collect those uh, in the overworld. And we don't learn gold feathers because you need to learn, you need to know how to fly in order to collect the gold feathers. So. Um, 
Yeah, we're going to know all of the moves, which is huge because not only do you not have to talk to bottles and learn all the moves, but it also makes it in Freeze Easy Peaks, you learn the uh, Beak Bomb, which is where you're flying and you jump right and you go directly forward in a needle, uh, like a needle nose forward shot, and you learn the running shoes in Gobi's Valley. And you need the running shoes in order to be boggy and freeze easy peaks, and you need to know the beak buster in order to get a jiggy, whoops, in Gobi's Valley, in order to get into Ruby's Pyramid. So basically, in those two levels, you need to move from each other to get a jiggy from each level. So what we used to do is we used to have go into one level twice, we used to go into freeze easy peaks twice, but with the discovery of the new glitch, now we have, you know, running shoes right off the bat. And that makes it so uh, we don't have to enter the levels twice. So while it was much faster that you didn't have to talk to bottles, it made it huge because you did not have to enter the level, uh, re-enter it twice, which was fantastic. Am I excited for ukulele? I am so freaking pumped for ukulele. You have no idea. I have been <laughs> paying very close attention to any kind of updates or info dumps that they talk about. There was... Um, I, it was just killing me when there was that huge lull for a while where basically Platonics was just playing possum, didn't say anything for a while. Wasn't making any kind of public information releases or anything like that. But uh, apparently <laughs> they were just chugging along doing their work and then they had a whole lot to show us. Really? What's the Wii sound all the time? Yeah, it's the bird jumping. You do the one of the little quirks about this game, some people find it annoying, a lot of people find it very charming, is that pretty much everything in this game has some kind of sound effect. Whenever you know you hit something, whenever you break something, you collect something, all of that has some kind of little sound effect. And it's very it's much faster to do little short hops movement wise than it is oops to just run at all times so that sound you're gonna you better get used to it because you're gonna hear it for most of the rest of the run you like this one better than banjo tui i flip flop back and forth and banjo tui has so many things that are just so much fun like the whole connecting worlds to each other which i thought was great i loved how every single level had a boss in it but there was also some drawbacks to Tui. One that totally nitpicky, totally teeny tiny. One thing that bugs the crap out of me though, also, sorry, I don't know if I can curse or not. I forgot to ask that. <laughs> but one thing that bugged the crap out of me was that there was 90 Jiggies instead of 100. That really doesn't really play into anything. Just one thing that bugged me. But another thing that bugged me was that, oh no, we're short a note. That's not good. One thing that really bugged me a lot was, you know, the whole... Uh -oh, shorter note. That's not good. There it is. It's always that one. It's always that little... That one always misses it. But I also hated how there was about 10 to 12 Jiggies. I can't remember the exact number. Where you had to get X amount of points and X amount of time. No! That is not a wing flap. Um, almost kind of felt, uh, lazy. Hello? Hi, hello. We didn't, uh, picnic, did we? Kind of got me worried there. What's up, Mad Bat? How is this being broadcasted, by the way? Uh, oops. Being broadcasted on the ESA Twitch channel, ESA Marathon. And I'm just basically looking at the chat. No furnace fun moves? Yeah, we did do it. We did furnace fun moves. Yes. Yes, I am. I didn't pick me. Okay, people were like, hello? Hello? Kind of my word. I don't know. My internet is finicky from time to time. It just doesn't want to listen. 
has a mind of its own. So another thing about the Furnace Pod moves is normally this little spring pad, we can't use it until we learn it in Treasure Trove Cove. However, obviously since we have all the moves, it makes it so we can actually unlock Clanker's Cavern in here so we don't have to backtrack into the room. Here. And then we go into Treasure Trove Cove, which was a level I loved as a kid, and when I first started speedrunning it, this level is such a pain in the butt for speedrunners, especially, you know, when you first start learning this game, because this is the level where they introduce flight. And because they introduce flight, they make the level huge and, you know, let you utilize it. And as a kid, it's really cool to be able to explore it, but because it's the first level that has flight, um, <laughs> there's a lot of jiggies you can get in flight. And the thing is, when you grab a Jiggy in flight, it skips the little Jiggy Jig. The Jiggy Jig, you know, the little animation that Banjo does when he grabs a Jiggy, a little dance, and then Kazooie eats a Jiggy. When you're obviously in, f in flight, he skips that animation. Ooh. Depth perception, please. But... Um, there's multiple Jiggies that you have to grab like that, and that in itself doesn't sound too difficult, but you need to grab the Jiggy in flight and then stay in flight. Jiggy's very small, it's close to the ground, and it's very, very difficult to do at first. As you play the game more and more, you get more familiar with it, but it is very hard to do, and it's something that deters a lot of people from running to the game at first, because it's very discouraging. And it can be quite a substantial time loss, so 45 seconds for landing and things like that. That's not gonna work. Oh, it did work. Never mind. I was wrong. Leaky's down there. We poop the eggs into him. Oh, thank you, funny. Yeah, you normally do like late night streams. And a lot of people find it as a relaxing stream to just chill out to, which is okay with me. Rare was like magic it back in the day. In the day. Honestly, okay. So I never had Perfect Dark. I had Perfect Dark Zero, though. What was your guys' opinion on it? Who had Perfect Dark and Perfect Dark Zero? I mean, if you like Perfect Dark more, that's one thing. That's totally fine. But people were just, you know, very unhappy. Just ripping on Perfect Dark Zero for the longest time. Oh my god, the FFZ emotes from my channel in here, that's actually awesome. Is the bird shitting eggs? He is indeed. The shark in the cell still as scares you? Yeah, it scares a lot of people. You're not alone with that. Okay, so... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2. So now we should be able to grab this note. No! Okay, we can grab that note later. There's a backup strap for it. Not a big deal. This is one of the jiggies we want to grab it. Stay in flight. <gasps> what? That was dead center. Okay, hold on. We're gonna try this instead. Hmm. Game's not behaving. There we go. Well, we managed to do that at least. That was quite a backup. That was really strange. That was dead center in the treasure chest. I'm really surprised by that. One, two, three, four. One. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And here's another one. This one's not so much a big deal if you kind of land, because you end up landing right there as well, but. Yes. Zero is meh. Perfect Dark Craig has perfect. What was so bad about Perfect Dark Zero? Again, like, I had it, I enjoyed it. Is it one of those things where it's by comparison it's terrible? Or is it just as a standalone game it's bad? Cool. There's a marathon lock, right? I haven't even done any kind of, like, risky strats of some sort. Okay, 
Oops. And now we got the ladders. There we go. Okay, we got it. Ah, uh, whoa! The marathon luck. There's uh, risky strats later in the in the game, much later in the game. Mostly in uh, Rusty Bucket Bay, there's a risky strat. Like when you do life blood skip, things like that. Yeah. This doesn't hold up anymore. What are the eggs in the notes for? Okay, so the eggs are for, you know, just regular ammunition for when you do egg shooting, whether it be forwards or behind you. You can either shoot the eggs in front of you or behind. One or two options. And then there's also the option, uh, oh, sorry, the notes. The notes, what the notes do is as you progress through the central hub, which is um, Grunty's Lair, you can use the notes to open doors. They're kind of uh, a restriction method to make it so you can't progress too far in the castle. There we go. Okay, so now we grabbed it. One, two, three. Perfect. Well, I'm glad we got that at least. <laughs> Some basic movement that wasn't working too well, but at least we got that very difficult Alco Jimmy successfully. So it's empty honeycombs. What they do is nothing really until you grab six one. Once you grab a sixth one, it actually gives you an an extra honeycomb container. What's up, Gian? How are you doing? I've seen you around in some places. You seem like a familiar name. Yes, feathers are for flying. Mumbo tokens, which are these little blue skull tokens that you find lying around. You actually trade them in to Mumbo Jumbo, who was found in... How many levels? Uh, how many levels? I think it's five. No, it's... Uh, yeah, it is five. I think it's five. But he transforms you, essentially. Yeah, I know, Pateri. I'll get the note. I'll actually show you this. Mumbo token's right here. Aw, yeah. thanks, Gene. I appreciate it. Hey, what's up, Belushi? How are you doing? How is your day going? Or your night. It's nighttime, isn't it? How was your? How was everyone's Father's Day? Here are Americans, because I, I mean I'm I'm not too familiar with foreign holidays, but I imagine you guys don't have Father's Day today. It's okay. So we got the note at least. this and now we're back on track okay so these notes are pain about to get ah oh, I got two of them not the third one come on get boxes there we go okay as you can see the flight in the this level makes it quite difficult to learn. You can actually um, fl uh, flap up again on the same frame that you land on the ground. So you'll see yourself using it either, but you don't actually end up flying up higher, which can be <laughs> very disheartening. It's Father's Day in the UK too? Oh, okay, cool. Okay, the X marks the spot, finally. Well, actually, yeah, X marks the spot. Sixth one. In the beginning of May. Oh, okay, so we we have um, we have Mother's Day in May. So now at this part, we simply have to spell out the word Banjo-Kazooie. 
all the letters are static. They're in the same place every single time you play. So it's just learning the fastest way to put them in. And in case you have trouble spelling, it's back there on the wall. Which you would think is pretty trivial. But actually, <laughs> when, you, when you play later, uh, casually at least, when you play casually and you do Furnace Fun, during the minigame squares, they'll actually ask you to spell out Banjo-Kazooie here, but they'll have you do it backwards. With a very strict time limit as well. Okay. So what we actually did here was a Death Warp. What happens is, when you die in this game, it is so horrendously costly, it's terrible. Um, when you die, all the notes in the level get reset, and whatever total you had is your high score. And so if you have 100, notes when you die it's no big deal all the you know all they all get reset but you can't get any more you can't get any higher than that so if you die while doing speed runs of this game when you say you know i have 40 notes or so uh you have to recollect all 40 night or all 40 notes and then continue along where you originally were so essentially if you die in a place when you're you know it's unintended you can lose upwards of like six seven minutes instantly just by a teeny tiny mistake so this game is very unforgiving in terms of speedruns. This little chamber pot that we just activated, there are one, two, three, four different colored chamber pots and they're warp points. So you activate two pots of the same color and when you jump in one, you teleport to the other one. Also, the reason why we um, killed ourselves also is for the death warp, which instantly takes you back to the entrance of the level, which is nice. But it also, we will always do it, pretty much I can't think of any other instance off the top of my head, where we will die uh, grabbing the 10th Jiggy. Let's see if we can get this very difficult jump. Ah, oh, okay, hold on. Nope. That's a pain in the butt jump. That one's extremely difficult. But what happens is when you grab the 10th Jiggy in the level, the little Jiggy Jiggy you do is actually an extended one. Normally the Jig is about 4 seconds, but when you grab the 10th and final Jiggy of a level, it's actually much longer, about 8 seconds. So we obviously want to skip that any chance that we can. And a good way to do that is by Death Warping. And what we're trying to do on that first jump is jumping outside of the pipe and then jumping on top of the ledge and then making another difficult jump to the side. What that would do is you'll see in a minute there's gonna be a little fish underground that spits out air bubbles for you. And he's, you know, if you, if you make that first jump, it makes a very clean cycle to grab the bubbles from the fish. So since I didn't get the jump, it's not gonna be the clean cycle, so it won't be optimal timing, but it'll be fine. Chamber pot joke. What chamber pot joke? Okay. So I grab the notes. And that large menacing whale, believe it or not, he is not a shark, he is a whale. He's referred to as a whale. He could be like a hybrid of some sort. But he is locked under the water, and by swimming through this key three times, he gets released up to the surface. And then we can go inside of him. Twice. Um, let's see. You skip it, ideally in one. You skip it in two. You skip it in three. Cool. Uh, bubble Goose Swamp, you skip it. Bubble, uh, what is after that? You skip it in Freeze Easy Peaks. Gobi's Valley, you skip it. Mad Monster Mansion, you skip it. And what else is there? Rusty Bucket Bay, you can skip it. And nope. Optimally, if you are completely optimal, you will never see the extended Jiggy Jig. There is a way to skip the Jiggy Jig in all of the levels. If you execute it perfectly. I know, Data Santa, I got, uh... I got better internet than you can realize I'm not as attractive as you thought I was. I love Stiv. Stiv is such a nice guy. Got to hang out with him at 
Uh, both the GDQs talked to him for a bit, as well as we talked to him on Skype, <laughs> back when Skype was a thing. He was a really cool guy. Really, uh, really awesome because, um, you know, not every community is great and willing to share secrets and strats and stuff like that because some people just get competitive. He was more than willing to help in any way he can give advice to have new runners in the community. Just an awesome guy all around. Also, he's not human. A lot of people don't know he's a cyborg. I've hugged him and I felt the circuit board in his back. The man is an he's inhuman. The, the the amount the amount of runs he's done is so impressive. And normally when it comes to certain games, or most games, the leaderboards are much more competitive and closer in time, whereas no one is close to Stiv. Stiv is like Stiv's like four minutes ahead of the second place person, the person before that, and then he's like six or seven minutes ahead of third place. It's it's not even close. Stiv is insane. Rip Skype, you won't be missed. Ah, uh, not from not by me. Not by me in the slightest. <laughs> so after that one? Nope, it did not go all the way. Trust me, if I had done you know, if I made the jump at the beginning and had the optimal movement, you'd <laughs> you would see how close it gets. Your air lasts for 60 seconds. Uh, each bubble lasts oops, 10 seconds. This level is also really impressive when done right, because this level is tons of cycles. Cycles between gloop in the bubbles, uh, the teeth shooting out with clanker, when he rises up and above the water, the bolt that I just wrote up on. There's tons of cycles in this level. When it's done perfectly, it's really impressive. Rip Skype, what? Yeah, more or less. The only thing that Skype is useful for at this point is video calls, and that's not even gonna last too long. No, I don't even use I don't even use Skype for video calls anymore. When I use video calls, I do Rabbit. Cause that way I can even like watch YouTube videos with them. <laughs> or like Netflix. Rippy dippy Skype. I mean, I love Microsoft, but they uh they kind of faltered quite a bit with Skype, in my opinion. Mumble tokens is not all 100 percent. No, getting all mumble tokens isn't max percent. What happens is, um, in 100 percent, normally when when it comes to a lot of different speedrun communities, the the majority of them will, if there is some kind of in-game tracker or progress bar of any sort most communities will follow whatever that is so for example you know metroid it gives you a percentage completion meter they follow what that is you know whatever 100 percent is in that and that game it's what reaches 100 percent and most communities will try to follow that as much as they can just to try to alleviate arguments and make everything as clear cut as possible well, with Banjo, we don't have a percentage completion, but there is something, there, there's a view total screen, which basically shows all the things that the game tracks. And the dra uh, the game only tracks, um, what is it, notes, empty honeycombs, and jiggies at every single level. So you don't actually have to get the mumbo tokens. We get just enough that uh, we can transform the bare minimum amount. Although my mumbo token route is not completely optimal, <laughs> I could definitely uh, do better on it. To be completely honest, my route is not all that optimal. I got pretty, I, I kind of like hit a wall at a certain point. And then Furnace Fun Moves was found and it saved a whole bunch of time right off the bat. And if I had done all of the uh, changes in the route, I would have automatically saved a lot of time. And if I had gotten a PB after that, it felt like I wouldn't have gotten a PB by actually getting better at the game it would have been a pb just because of free time save because of a glitch and um i felt it wouldn't be as satisfying so to be honest what you're seeing now is kind of in uh, a retro route i guess it's an older route that you will very you, you pretty much won't see in any kind of modern speed runs once i get a pb i'm gonna update it but i actually kind of want those feathers treasure trove clothes flights not good at all it's easier 
Uh, I mean, I will say that Skype screen share function is invaluable. That is nice. That is definitely nice. If you're troubleshooting something with a computer, or showing someone something. I have one guy who's helped me quite a bit when I built my computer and when I have issues with it. And it's so nice to just share a screen with him. But for the most part, that's really the only thing that Skype has over anything else right now. What's up, Tiny? Anything over Skype. I mean, they didn't even get IP protection for, on Skype until recently. Like, like, how long was Skype out for? Before they did that? Nope, he didn't want to come out to me. Nope. The guy wants to hide under the pipe. Where are you, what are you doing? And now he's stuck on the wall. You still use Skype? Why would why would you use Skype? Do you not use Discord? I don't know. I, I will admit, if Discord hadn't come around, I'd probably still be using it. I hate Mumble or I hate Teamspeak. Ugh. Teamspeak is so confusing. It's not user friendly at all. It's a mess. <sighs> we used to do team meetings on there. <laughs> we used to do team meetings on there, and that was a nightmare. I was like, oh my god, how the hell do I navigate this damn game? This, Am I doing runs for DreamHack? No. No. God, gosh, no. Not at all. I hacked them and stole their stream key, put my button underneath for following to grow my chat. I'm a lead hack store. Okay, so this part is routed very tightly. We have 60 seconds of air, and what we're going to do is we grab the 10 jiggy underwater, so we skip the jiggy jig. We're going to grab these last seven notes. We'll bring our total to 100 notes. And then we're going to swim up and grab an empty honeycomb. And all of this takes about 58 seconds, about. So you have about two seconds of movement error. Now that we've grabbed the empty honeycomb, we drown, which warps us back to the entrance and we will leave. Okay. See you. Wish to be normal. You have a good night. I hope you had fun. Why did you make that? Okay. That was a really early jump. I was not confident I was making that jump there. Okay. Honestly, my, uh, except for missing the first jump at the beginning with the gloop cycle, that was a pretty solid Clanker's Cavern. That was not too bad at all. That's not how you get partnership. I know, what will I ever do? Right, Ginny? TeamSpeak, TeamSpeak is not that easy. It's like, you got, what, what do you have to do? You have to... I don't even remember, I've done it. I've successfully navigated TeamSpeak, I think, twice. <laughs> you gotta, like... Join a server, which was really confusing to figure out how to do that in the first place by finding like the, the IP or the code or whatever the hell it is. And then once you go into it, it might have also partially been because the TeamSpeak server that I was a part of was a big one. <laughs> it's a very big one. But there's like all the different channels and then there was figuring out how to unmute my mic and then there was like different tabs for chat because like they were trying to like, oh, you know, post the YouTube video, you know, that you're talking about here. I'm like, I am typing it. Like, where? And because I was typing it to the wrong chat because there was tabs and just all this confusing crap. <laughs> Discord is much more user-friendly in my opinion. Uh-oh, what did Tiny do? I approve of said, you know, said bopping, but... <laughs> oh my gosh, that pansy went though. We got a pull on this year. Pretty sure Microsoft wants to take Skype in a professional direction. They developed Skype for business, which snaps into Outlook and is instant messaging for companies. And that's, I think, a good idea, to be honest. I feel mm, Skype is better for... It doesn't seem like a general public program. It doesn't, it, it seems like it's very, it's faulty when it comes to the general public and their uses for it. I don't know. Except for the emojis. Emojis, they're like perfect for 14, 15 year olds. Also, thank, thank you for all the files, guys. We should be good still. Oh, that was nice. We just barely made that. Cool beans.
call out somewhere and all, and they crash from time to time. It's really funny. People say they have issues with um, Discord crashing. I never, ever have any issues. Ever. <laughs> Whenever Ramen calls, I never hear a problem. I mean, some people might say my mic is, like, crappy. Or I'm like, no, it's not even that my mic's crappy. It's that my audio is so wishy-washy. It's all over the place. There's one server in particular where, for some reason, my microphone is so goddamn quiet. To some of the people in the channel. Other people is like, holy crap, step away from the mic. I'm, I'm gonna need to I know my, it's called an eardrum, but that doesn't mean you sound waves to constantly beat on it till it bleeds. Didn't really say that. My friends aren't that great. They just say, ow. The, gra the ground pound in this game is kind of weird at times. You'll ground pound, but the effect won't take place. And if you don't move an inch, but ground pound again in the exact same location you were, it works. It's really, really strange. Ran, I hate you so much. Oh, you're a six puppy. Oh, holy crap. Okay, so usually, as time goes on, whenever there's new glitches discovered or things like that, um, routes and levels are, you know, prone to change. There'll be something new, something different. Oops. Some of them are major. Oh, excuse me. Some of them are major, some of them are minor. But this level has not changed almost at all. <laughs> almost at all in so long. And that's because that little crocodile that I shot the egg into... Um, they determine the route of the level. Because once you shoot an egg into uh, six, I, know, I can't remember if it's five or six. I'm pretty sure it's six. But once you shoot the egg into the sixth one, you get a jiggy. But the order, you know, the where they go is static and the same each time. And so they pretty much determine the route of the level. You guys are gonna you, you guys are so gonna take advantage of the fact you can actually use Catherine here, aren't you? Whoops. Okay, cool. Beautiful. You just have to get used to the software. That is that's absolutely true. I mean most things are gonna be very confusing at first, however, Obviously, some of them are more user-friendly and easier to get used to than others. And learn. Yeah, we got the cutscene skip. Perfect. So you can hear that little beautiful fluttering noise for probably another 20 seconds or so. By ground pounding, before it triggered the next cutscene, it's basically skipped them. They overlapped, one of them got cut short, and showed the second one. What happens when you ground pound on the witch switch? Freaking silly. You got <laughs> You guys are the worst. On a reasonable convenient your server tab, you can write into the server tab. See, I have so bare minimum of experience with Team Speaks on it, know what you're talking about. Team Speaks for pros. Honestly, that's how it seemed. I mean majority of people that I saw who used Team Speak were, you know, competitive players. Very elitist. Self-righteous, important people, that kind of stuff. Damn it. Whoa, okay. Kind of went off track. Normally, when that cutscene's playing, you can't move, but I had the buzz bomb actually attack me during the cutscene, which allowed me to move during it. But the, the, the orientation of the camera changes with the cutscene. Which then, you know, also affects your movement. Because <laughs> Vader's direction is relative to the camera. We're gonna kill this asshole. And there's the last one. Why wouldn't it work there? I, I don't know. Because ESA is awesome and they don't censor free speech, unlike me. Okay, 
Okay, so here's hoping we can get this glitch. It's not all that difficult, but I have been known to make mistakes, believe it or not. Cool. So I will explain that glitch in just a second. And three. Six, one, six, two, five. Yeah. So that was subpar RNG because six number here is very far away from one. And see what I mean? When I was talking about with the ground pounding not working, and it takes you back to six, which is very far away. Then we do two. Six two five isn't too bad. That's actually really good. They're all right next to each other. Two, six, five, three, one, six, one. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. And then it ended on the turtle furthest away from where we need to be afterwards. One, six, one. All right, so what happens is normally, uh, w the way I did that glitch at the beginning of this little mini game is normally when it's showing you the pattern, you can't move. However, if something interacts with Banjo during a cutscene, it allows him to move, which is why when I was attacked by the buzz bomb before, um, I was able to move. So what happens is if you jump on that turtle, <laughs> excuse me, sorry, long day at work. If you jump on that turtle, um, Banjo actually bounces off of him. It doesn't do that with a lot of people, but it does with him. When you jump on the turtle, it bounces Banjo off. So what we do is we time it so you jump towards the turtle right before the cutscene starts. And then when the cutscene starts, Banjo's in midair. And then as the, the cutscene plays, Banjo lands on the turtle. And because you do, it moves Banjo. And because that happened, then you can move during the cutscene. So you can basically go over and actually start hitting the turtles as it's showing you the sequence. But you can only do it for the first one. The first one. Dang, couldn't get the jump off. That's okay. Cool, you did it. You did the jump. Let's be real. Let me either be the best or the worst for this one in particular, more or less. Yeah, the order in which the turtles actually pipe up and tell you to hit them is completely random. One of the instances in the game where it's random. Comes down to RNG. As if this game isn't Super Mario 64 enough. I, you know, I don't really hear many people comparing this game to Super Mario 64. Why do you say that? Besides, the only thing I can think of is, you know, it's a 3D platformer on the N64. And then that... You know, in, in Super Mario 64, you're supposed to collect coins. You want to collect 100 coins, but that's... And you collect 100 notes. But I don't see much of a comparison otherwise. Cool. Now we get to do our first transformation. Transformations are great as well, because when you're transformed, either in, you know, this level you turn into the... Crocodile? I can't remember if it's a crocodile or alligator. I live in Florida. I should kind of know the, the difference between the two, but oh well. But, you know, when you're the crocodile or when you're the pumpkin, when you're the bee, when you're the termite, when you grab a jiggy, Banjo does not dance. He loses his mojo when he transforms. So it saves a couple seconds. Do they have separate categories? No, they don't. Not on the leaderboard. Uh, the main difference, also, here's another example of first fun moves being fantastic, because this minigame sucked. It was the run killer. So many runs would die during this one, because, you know, vile rubber bands, really, really bad. And, uh, it was easy to lose, but now with first fun moves, we actually have to run in shoes, makes it near impossible to lose. But, back to the question, as far as version differences, there's not many. 
This is the the Xbox version is basically version 1.1 of Banjo Kazooie, which makes it so you can't do uh, ticker hill skip, termite hill skip. But other than that, they're very similar. The only other difference is in the Xbox version, you can't skip text. You can fast forward it, but you can't outright skip it. Oh my gosh, RNG, why? That was a little closer than I wanted to be. But yes, uh, the Xbox version cannot skip text. It does have faster loading zones, however, because you can't skip the text, it's slower. Overall. Um, the other big difference, casually, once you die in a level, the notes don't get reset in the Xbox version. So if you were to die, say with 90 notes, uh, they, they don't get reset on the ground. You don't have to recollect them. Which is great for casual play, and it's good for beginners when it comes to speed speedrunning this game, but to be honest, Obviously, you don't want to die unintentionally, so it's not really worth it, you know, as time goes on. It's good at the beginning, but not something you want to rely on. And the Xbox 360 version and the Xbox One version, as far as I know, are pretty much identical. I'm not too knowledgeable on the subject. My friend Shadow Worm knows much more about it. He's one of the few people who runs the Xbox version. Almost no one runs the Xbox version. Clint Stevens? No, I'm actually good friends with Clint Stevens. I love Clint. This did not look like Dream Pack. I'm streaming from my hotel room. I'm basically a bubble boy. With the red. Hmm. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I forgot. Oh, wow, that was really bad. It just peeled. Oh my god, dude, why is this game so mean? Right now? So this one all turns back and forth. Wow. That was so incredibly lucky. One happened to pop up underneath me, and it happened to be the color that I needed. That is unheard of. If anything, this game has quite a sense of humor and likes to screw you over, and will randomly pop out the uh, the wrong one that you need. Good idea, Hustle. Rare replay? Nope. <laughs> Rare Replay is pretty, as far as I'm aware, identical to the Xbox 360 version. It might have even faster loading zones, but I'm not sure. Like I said, I mean, the Xbox 360 version had um, faster loading zones as it is. And I imagine the jump from the Xbox 3, the N64 to the Xbox 360 was very substantial that you couldn't really bridge more of a gap. Cool. That was good RNG from the buzz bomb, though. He followed right behind me. And there we go. We have the notes, empty honeycombs, and all the G. So we just exit the level this way. Yep. <laughs> a lot of people fail that game, Dangerous. <laughs> and the thing is, like, a lot of people had trouble with it, with the running shoes. The speed run actually... Almost had it. The speed run makes it so you don't even. What is it called? The the speed run make uh, used to be you had to do it without running shoes, which made it much more difficult. So now that we have the running shoes, it's a lifesaver. So you have a fun little fun little skip, teeny tiny skip, nothing major. We do this. We go right over here. Hop on up and drop in here. Normally what you're supposed to do is go into the next room and drop into a vase or a vase, whichever you prefer. But it drops you down into the top of the hat and you grab the jiggy that way. But instead of having to, you know, it basically causes you to backtrack. So instead of having to do that, we just do that nice little parkour parkour. Cool. Okay. 
So now we're actually going to head on to Gobi's Valley. Well, first we have to open the level. Then we're going to head to Gobi's Valley. Gobi's Valley, it, it, it's a level. It's it's a level, to say the least. There's, it's, I don't know, it's, it's such a strange level. Usually I can think of levels and I love it, or I hate the level. With, with Gobi's Valley, it flip-flops so much. It, it really is, you know, how I'm feeling at the time kind of level. <laughs> so now we have the second purple chamber pot. Or no, no we don't, never mind. That is the second chamber pot in general. But it's the purple one. The original hardware. I don't necessarily have a preference. Doesn't really matter to me. What's nice about them is they're literally just ported over pretty much. They're pretty much direct ports. So they didn't change anything. They didn't up anything. They didn't change anything gameplay wise. But they also didn't change it aesthetically either. That's one thing a lot of people tend to overlook when it comes to HD remakes. For example, Conquer Live and Reloaded. Conquer looked uncomfortable. He seriously looked like you know how they how people get covered in tar and then they feather them. They kind of looked like they did that, but with fur. It looked unnatural. It really looked scary. Party's over there. I don't know. I got a pretty teeny tiny house. Plus, I live in Florida. No one wants to voluntarily go to Florida. Also, this uh, this level is also cool but also a pain in the butt because there is a exploit that we use based on camera angles i'll explain in a second oh i kind of want to do it. it's okay cool so this guy right here there is five of them oh good rng cool there's five of them you have to go through and they actually don't spawn on the screen until you can visibly see them in your field of view your camera so normally when you enter the level casually most people go up the hill looking you know directly forward up it whereas in the speed run we purposely turn the camera around the opposite direction and when you're doing the casual playthrough since you walk up the hill and you go normally you can see him pop up out of the ground but in the speed run we flip the camera the other way that way he doesn't actually spawn and we can jump on top of him as he's popping up. It's really clever. It's, it saves some time as well and it creates for a very interesting round of the level. Aw, oh, bridge of the universe. Oh my gosh. Oh, that did work. Okay, cool. See, now we have that one. So now we've gone through two of the five and you'll notice it showed the third one popped up over in the corner and when we actually exit this temple again it's going to pop up where the first one did because when you enter into the main overworld for the area it will from another loading zone for example if you leave any kind of pyramid and go into the main overworld area of the level it will always spawn the uh for, it will spawn the, ooh, they're called Ancient Ones, in the same first area that we went to. So it makes it predictable. Where that other one spawned directly underneath the cacti was really good. I don't know why I did that. I don't know why I did that. Uh, was really good because it just happened to be good RNG, where after I shot the eggs, I could drop down into him, hop through the ring, and then exit. You get all four seasons in one day, more or less. More or less. You get hot, humid, super hot, and then moderately tolerable. Cool. So now we've gone through three of them. And as you saw, it spawned a different one. Ooh, that was close. Nope, that's not shooting eggs. Why would you want to go to far tiny? Yep, I know Turtai, and it's it's really strange because they they censored on the Xbox version, like they censored everything on the Xbox version. 
but apparently it's it's like a, a little reward that you get instead of like a new game plus you get a version that doesn't censor words but do they uncensor the word like the f word i i, I say the f word because i i don't know if i'm allowed to curse i think i could say like you know suck but i don't know if i can chop those big ones but regardless <clears throat> In the N64 version, they pretty much didn't censor the F word or the S word, and uh, HE double or HE double hockey stick is obviously fine. But yeah, you think that Nintendo would be the one to censor the language as opposed to Microsoft? Not uncomfortable, Dreya. What's that in freedom degrees? 17 Celsius. Oh my gosh, really? Anything Celsius. It's, well, it's almost two, so it's like 30. So like 60, 64 degrees, 65 degrees, something like that. Somewhere around there, right? What's up, Rim? How are you doing? I actually didn't get invited, I applied. There was like a little, you know, window where you could submit your game and hope that you get it in. Oh, that was wrong. I mean, I, I was supposed to shoot the eggs and I wasn't supposed to go into town drop. That's okay. But, basically they made it so if you are in Merca and you can't go to the event but you want to stream from there, they give you the times that are normally... Most people in that area are asleep, but people in Merca are awake. Or wherever... I toy my favorite ring. Or wherever you live is awake. So it works out actually really nicely. It's freedom degrees. Yeah, that's, you know, that's what the F stands for, freedom. Is chat slow? Yes, it is. It is definitely slow. It's later. It's, it's decently late, but... It's decently late. But I think, uh, what time is it where the event, where ESA actually is being held? That, that's way too late. I hate this room. That's not what I meant to do. Climb him! There we go. Okay, I never seen that before. I was wondering if that was gonna go on forever. Which is like Oops, hold on. I can't math speedrun and try to be interactive with chat at the same time. I think. Oh come on! God So now you guys get to see the backup strat, which is Oh, I got a first try. Wow, that never happens. Okay, I'll take that. That was really nice. That never happens. Yeah, I normally, this is my normal wake time stream at this hour, but it's not my channel. So, it happens. And I, I was kind of confused because I knew my time was coming up. Like, I was supposed to be at like 9.15 was my shift. And I knew that there was a short run that was right before my shift. And when talking to people, oh, that's not gonna work, is it? Nope, that didn't work. Let's see if we can get this. Hold on one second. That would work. There we go. Normally you're supposed to have the running shoes in order to get that, but you know, forget that. Too slow. Actually, you think uh, you would think that having running shoes would make it faster, but no. Running shoes are far too out of the way. I'm running back there would be slow. Actually, we're good on health. We're pretty dang good on health. But I uh, I knew that my run was at around like 9:15 p.m. my time, and I knew that I had a short like 10, 15, 20 minute run before me. But they said that the run would be like five to ten minutes late. I was like, oh okay. So I guess whatever runs going on right now, there's another one afterwards. So I was going to go to the bathroom, get a drink, and message Discord and like, tweet like, oh, make sure to come check it out. But 
I looked over on the screen. <laughs> I had the ESA channel up. I looked over, I was like, oh, okay, I'm live. I should probably start. <laughs> so I didn't even get the chance to tweet out. This level's not being, eh, this level hasn't been too bad. It's mostly been the ancient ones, really, which is very common. We can have the bot in here, but we can do something fun. We can do something fun in Free Season Peaks that you guys hopefully will enjoy. Actually, I don't even know. I uh, I don't know if I should encourage, like... It's fun spam, but it's still spam. Also, how are you doing, Daniel? Have fun, Twisted. I don't know any kind of time zone listings off the top of my head. Except for EST and PST. Those are literally the only ones I know. Ooh, I know Germany is supposed to be five hours ahead. If I'm correct. But ESA is not held in uh, Germany, right? It's held in Sweden, if I remember correctly. I don't know about Rare Replay. Is it? I don't, I don't uh, I think it might be. I think it might be the Xbox 360 version. No, 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 it's not. I'm sorry. That's wrong. On the Xbox 360 version, it is censored because the Xbox 360 version is live and reloaded. If I'm correct, the Xbox One version, the Rare Replay version, is not live and reloaded. It's just the original Conquer. So that means it doesn't have the very odd Conquer aesthetics. That are in the re live and replay. It should be the normal ones. Also, yeah, we totally just uh, skipped that maze. Went up on the wall, walking on the ledges. Also, if you're familiar with this game, you might have noticed that we actually didn't hit the witch switch. There's a witch switch in the maze. And if you've also been paying attention, the witch switches are the little things that you hit that makes the jiggy appear in the overworld, and you grab it, and that's one of the ten that's in the overworld. But. We actually. Oops. Nope, that's fine. We actually don't need to hit it because out of the nine witch switches, seven of them make a jiggy spawn. However, two of them are always spawned. They're just out of reach. And, you know, th there's one for Freeze Easy Peaks, which is hidden behind a snow panel. And then the one for Gobi's Valley is hidden inside the sarcophagus. They're both always there, they just make the panel drop down and they make the sarcophagus open. But we actually don't need to open either of those panels or the sarcophagus in order to get the Jiggy. Which I will show you in two minutes? What's up Charlie, how are you doing? Uh, Daniel, I have my splits up right now. It does not look like I'm going to PV. I mean, we have uh, 45 seconds of free time save and... Freeze these peaks, but... <laughs> I, I'm not sure if that's enough for me to PV. It'll be fine. You just subscribe if you don't worry about it. Cool. Okay. We don't need to go on a magic carpet ride. We're good. And that is... Mouse on stream. Sorry, it was fine. <laughs> they told me at the beginning of the stream. Uh, mouse is on the stream. Move it off. I'm like, how does that even work? And then they messaged me. Oh, wait. Don't worry. That was just my mouse. So now you'll see where we get, how we get the sarcophagus to be. Good how by question marks? I don't know. I prefer exclamation marks. So now we just do this. Whoops. We do this, actually. Actually, that's what we do. We don't bear punch. Just out of reach, but we can still get it. This game is such a fun game, but... 
Lots of glitches, as is customary for rare games. It makes me wonder if ukulele is going to be the same. It's... I mean, it's, it's the same people. Different engine and console and everything like that, more powerful, but I wonder if it's going to be just as glitchy. There's three of them that are always there. I mean, you spawn the one in Mumbles Mountain, Treasure Trove Cove, Clanker's Cavern, Bubble Gloop Swamp. I guess that's true. Bubble Gloop Swamp is always visible. It's always just out of reach, but there's no known way to clip in and get it yet that I'm aware of, unless it's like Taz only. No RTA ways. Now we're on our way to the very outskirts of the castle to open Mad Watch Dimension. Ooh, okay. Okay. Cool. There we go. Am I going to play ukulele? Absolutely. 100%. Not tonight. A cute daisy in Discord? Nope. No such thing as a cute daisy. Daisy's the worst Nintendo character who ever existed. Absolute monstrosity of a character. You're finally siblings, that's awesome. Working over in a restaurant on Father's Day is really tries your patience. <laughs> oh god. Food service industry is great, isn't it? GB version. No, not yet, Hustley. I really, really want to, and I keep saying, you know, like, I'll do it soon, I'll do it soon, but I just have such a huge backlog of games I haven't gotten to yet. But yes, I do want to do it soon. I've heard that the Game Boy Advance version of Banjo is actually really good. It just really suffers from the lack of depth perception. Other than that, I heard it was fantastic. Yeah, uh, Ukulele's release is uh, quarter one of 2017. When they originally launched the Kickstarter, it was supposed to be late 2016, but I was saying for months, it's going to be pushed back. It was supposed to be in October, uh, October of 2016. And I guess they were going to push it to December to try to make it for the holiday season, but I would not have been surprised if they pushed it back to 2017, and I was right. I really wish I wasn't, <laughs> but I was. We need to break that gate because we'll actually come back later once we exit the level as the pumpkin. And we need to go down there as the pumpkin. But we obviously can't break the gate as the pumpkin. Actually, that's not obvious at all. For all you know, we could be like Jack O'Lantern from Billy and Mandy. We'd be like massive, have armies of zombies after us. Fantastic singing voice, but no. We're just a regular pumpkin. A pumpkin. Where's Doug gonna go to say pumpkin when we need him to? What'd you think he was? What? Oh, that's what it was. What'd you think that song was about? Pumpkins? There it is. That's what the quote was. I was like, ah, I know it's Doug Dimmodome, but what was the quote? <laughs> I love that show. Quiet uh, That's right, we need to break this. Kind of important. Bats. Uh, I'm just going to be on here for my banjo run. After my banjo run, I actually don't know who's after me. Yep, they're using Grant Kirkhope and David Wise? Is that his name? I know he's working on the project. I can't remember if he's music or not. Ah, uh, that's actually okay. David Wise, I'm pretty sure, is the guy's name. The guy who did the music for the Donkey Kong games. But Banjo, or <laughs> Banjo, Grant Kirkhope and David Wise are both making the music for the games. And they said that they're actually splitting it, where if they're in a level, and th th they'll look at it, and the two of them will discuss and decide who will make the music, because some of them, they, they feel one or the other can make better shooting music for level, which I think is awesome. But yes, they're both working on it. 
I missed a window? Did I not go back and get it? Or are you talking about on the other side? Because I... I think I went back and got it. I think she cheats? No. She, I know she cheats. Come on. Like, please. Someone's got to here to back me up. Someone here has to back me up. Daisy cheats. Okay, I'm pretty sure I got both of the windows, but just to be safe, to make sure it's good, I'm going to double check. Get away from me. So I got that one. Oh, I didn't get that one. Whoops. Okay. You're right. I'm wrong. Sorry. It's a long day. Oh, Matt? Cool. I didn't know Matt was actually doing that. Running this event. Cluster Truck Alpha All Levels. I've never even heard of it. Because on PS4, yeah, it's every console. I'm really interested to see what they're going to do for the Wii U controls on the gamepad. Really, really interested to see what they're going to do. So here we have another uh, reading enhancement minigame. Stupid video games aren't supposed to teach us to read and write. It's supposed to be fun. But here we have to spell out Banjo Kazoo again. What? Wow. See, what happens is, when you do that little ground pound like I did, what's supposed to happen is, from the time that Kazooie's beak hits the ground and she bounces back up, Banjo's basically invincible. He cannot be here. Whoops. And he's invincible until Banjo eventually lands back on the ground again. And we use that quite, oh, I think like three times or not. Three times on, I think. But for some reason, I got hit there at the end. I never cheat on this play. What's that play? Like the the sun, the me melee online thing? I don't play melee. Unless you talk about, you know, like Project M, because that's cheating on melee, in which case, yes, I love Project M. In which case, yes, I am cheating on, on that play. What's up, Mom? Daisy's not nice and sweet. What are you talking about? There's nothing nice and sweet about cheating the system to screw your everyone in the game out of their stars last turn. Or, you know, screwing them out of coins so they can't buy a star. Daisy cheats. And this is way back when, you know, I was a kid and played only on easy mode. She still cheated. Still cheated. There's nothing good about Daisy. I know it's true. It's true. That's why I'm glad there is someone here to help keep an eye on me to make sure I'm not missing anything. Else. Hey, we got it. Nice. We skipped. Uh, we skipped the animation. I saved about four or five seconds or so. Basically, the jiggy sits there. And it has a small window. It has a small window where you actually can't grab the jiggy. And this makes it so we can jump at a very small window. And Banjo will gain momentum with his movement. And then if you're still inside the jiggy grabbing hitbox... Banjo will grab the Jiggy and, with his momentum, go over the edge of the Jiggy. And that will allow us to fall in the water, and when you fall in the water, you can 
you make one quick jump in the water and that allows you to collect the jiggy in the water and that skips the animation. So we do that in Mumbo's Mountain on the 10th jiggy and we also do that as you saw just right there. And then we try to do it in Rusty Bay, Bucket Bay as well. Nope, that's not right. That's the line we did. Actually, I have no reason to have headphones in. Headphones I normally have in so I can hear alerts. There's not a single reason for me to have my headphone in. It's like kind of dangling and bugging the crap out of me. Now it does not bother me at all. I never cheat the system. I'm just good. They need to get good. That is their problem, not mine. And you know what? Alex cheats. Every time, right before an event. If you go look at Alex, he's always streaming Mario Party. Coincidentally, just really odd coincidence, you know, he just happens to be playing the game that, you know, he's doing in the event. It's really weird. I, I, I don't know. Is done flipped. It's kind of hard to keep track. <laughs> Who is Daisy? Daisy, the character from Mario Party, the 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 weird the weird miscolored thing, the thing that would basically be a uh... Daisy to Peach is the same thing as ah uh, Falcos to Fox, basically clones. They're the exact same thing. <laughs> auburn hair. I think it might be the first person who's ever described her hair as auburn. Most people would just go brown. <laughs> what the heck? That was very strange. That was really strange. Go in. There we go. See, speedrunning is fun because when you speedrun and you stream it, you know, it's very common for people to say, like, oh, that's never happened before. You know, it's, just, it's the speedrunner thing. I think it's also a very common place for it to happen during events and marathons and things like that because I've never had that happen. <laughs> Where I walked off the ledge. Down to one other part. Oh, you're very welcome, Grand Cook Cook. Fun fact that literally everyone under the sun knows. But some of you might be indoors, therefore not directly under the sun. A little thank you here from the fire pots. It's actually recorded by Grant Kirk Cook. The, the process that they did for recording audio for this game in no, mostly in audio. Sound effects, character voices, that's probably a better way. Character voices. It was actually really funny. Apparently they just went in and made as many goofy noises as they could. They would take it and then they like make them speak higher, raise the pitch, or have them be more energetic or loud or increase duration, things like that. And what whoops. What they did was they just basically had a massive log and database of sound effects and they kind of just picks, picked and mixed and matched and that's how they got the sound effects for all the different characters. The miscolored thing. Yes, the miscolored thing. Expect da Daisy is more of a color swap. I don't expect that considering she's not going to be in the game. Got all the tears, all the salty Daisy fans. When Rosalina got into Smash 4, oh, I'll relish that day forever. Incredible, indescribable feeling. You are not the first person to think that. Maj 
A large, overwhelming... Oh, overwhelming majority of the Twitch community thought the same thing. That sucks. That's really sucky. So, unfortunately, we fell off of the pipe up there. I'm just trying to show you guys all what can go wrong during these speedruns, in case you're wondering. These are all completely intentional. I said that it would take me about, you know, two and a half hours to do the run, so I wanted to make sure I filled up that content with lots of really fun, entertaining screw-ups that you never see anyone ever do, because no one's ever dumb enough to make that screw-up. There we go. I didn't even go in the window anyway, so. We're actually going to go into the second floor again. Because there is someone in there. His name is Lago. What? Lago? Lago. I think it's Lago. What is his name? Ugh. Oh no, it's going to drive me nuts. They have, they, have nick they have names for every character in this game. I think it's Lago the Toilet. And it was the funnest thing to do as a child. It was so fun to do as a child, just in general. But it was great because you actually got a reward for it. I just thought it was fun to get flushed down the, the toilet as a kid. One of the funniest things ever. Even better to realize you got a reward and that's what you're supposed to. And you got a jiggy out of it. So, again, grab the jiggy as the pumpkin. Let's get the has told he had to do the redo many, many times because higher ups. That doesn't surprise me. That does not surprise me. Whoops. Oh, split didn't work. It is Lago. Okay. That's it. So now we're going to go with here. And then this little entranceway you can only fit in as the pumpkin. That actually really doesn't surprise me, especially knowing Rare's sense of humor. It sounds just like when they try to hide that in, in the game. <laughs> A secret hidden fuck you. Okay, so now we reset. The reason being is if you know, you know, the, the little entryway into the door was just a teeny tiny little hole in the door, rotted away in the wood, and you can't fit in or out of it as Banjo. So, if I didn't reset, what I would do is I would transform back into the pump pin, wait for the animation to finish, walk out all the way across the graveyard, and then into the fire lair, and then once you get to the very end of the fire lair, you transform back into Mandro, which takes forever as the pumpkin. It's really slow. So by resetting, it's faster, you know, with the talent drop. But the other huge reason why we do it and why it saves time is over here. If this, if you remember, this is the witch switch we hit in Clanker's Cavern. And you get this jiggy. We never really had a way routed to get this. And what we would do is when we go and unlock Click Clock Wood, we just kind of go off on a tangent and get the jiggy that way. Whereas with this new, with the, with the reset, we get it on the way. And then we can simply go in here, activate the purple chamber pot, and teleport like this. Excited for ukulele. What's that? Yep. No. And it has to be whole as well. You can't just put, you can't just flush chunks of pumpkin up there, down there, up there. And now you gotta use a full pumpkin. Ice Climbers was cool. It was really fun seeing high skilled Ice Climbers in Melee and Competitive, but ugh, as a kid playing with them, playing with the Ice Climbers was not something I was very adept at. I was horrible with Ice Climbers. 
God. Yeah, where those CPUs are pain in the butt. Okay, and now we wait. So if you're here, off screen, the little green twinkly munchers actually were spawning. However, unless you actually show them on the screen in your field of view, the game does not consider the twinkly munchers as actually being there. Which is why we stand on the corner of the present. But no matter how fast you move, that first one will always spawn. So we actually kill him and then come back to the corner of the present. Wait until 48 seconds. Let these guys have something to eat. And then we're good. Reset. Okay. This part, so easy. Not difficult at all. But I've been having some bad luck with it lately. So let's hope I can do this successfully. That would that would be that'd be swell. A wonderful Father's Day gift to me. Let me go up here. Let me go one. Two. Three. Cool. Okay. We're good. And since the game only thinks you can fly, you know, go through the ring by flight, it automatically puts you back in flight. One. Two. Three. Cool. That was good. That was good. Why? So it's actually very common. Yeah, I knew that was going to be that angle. It's very common in the Banjo community when we do the boggy races in this level. For chat to spam away during the actual race. I don't know how strict the mods are going to be. Or if they'll allow it or not. But it is very common in the Banjo community. Especially considering Boggy is my most hated character in the, ban in the Banjo games. Some people did it originally just to bug me and try to get under my skin. That's great. The run does not die if you turn the washing machine, no. The run is not dead. It only lose a couple seconds. It's actually funny because the wa getting turned to the washing machine sucks because you lose a couple seconds, but as far as transformation time losses can go, it's not that as bad. You can, you know, turn into the tre uh, the tre you can turn into the washing machine, but in even rarer circumstances, Mumble will randomly say, "Hey, I have a really cool spell that will turn you into a T Rex," and then, oops, that's too high. And Mumbo will transform you, but you'll still be Banjo. And he goes, nah, just kidding. That will make the game too easy. And then he transforms you. You can play as the washing machine. You can play as the washing machine in Tui. When in Kazooie, he just goes, whoops, I'll change you back. No. No, pipe skip. So if your movement's nice there, you can land inside the pipe, grab the jiggy, and then save this little animation, but only saves a couple seconds, not a big deal for this one. Boggy the Bear, it's just the game character. Oh, no, 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 it's much more than that. See, the thing is, Boggy, it's Christmas. It's Christmas, and what does he do? He starts, you know, he eats, he eats so much, he gets drunk, he eats metallic hunks of metal. And uh, basically incapacitates himself. He's just can't even move. And again, it's on Christmas. Doesn't get his kids any presents. Finally, a very kind-hearted grizzly or brown bear. We'll go with brown bear. Comes, finds him, and helps him by using very precise medical treatment. Very caring, 
medical treatment, he's able to extract said Jiggy from the bear, from Boggy. And what does he do? No. You, you would think he would go home with his kids, you know, for Christmas. But instead, he goes to the racetrack, essentially. The equivalent to the racetrack. He sits there and races people. Will we do the thing tonight? I'm not sure. I mean, I don't know. Mods, are people allowed to take part in the Wahaze and just basically spam Wahaze for kids? I don't know. It's up to the mods. Yes, you're also a T-Rex and Tui, that's correct. They took the, the fake transformations from Kazooie and made them real things. I love the walrus too, I actually really like being the walrus. He's adorable. Most of the transformations are pretty cute, but... Oh, he's worse, Huey. I know. He literally just sits on his fat furry butt in front of a TV. Okay, you guys ready? And now we start the race. And... now we go. This is also so much fun, because... Everyone loves rubber banding in, in video games, right? Everyone loves rubber banding. Best best mechanical of all, right? So normally, oops. Normally, chat will spam what hey, this is normally when they do it during banjo runs. Because as you can see, Bob is just having the time to play. Yeah. Ah, oh, the tradition lives on. <laughs> I love it. It's so good. Oh, there's so many blues and purples. I love it. Now we need to let him get ahead of us during this long present. That's way he doesn't rubber band and get us at the end. Dang it. It's okay. And hold your white haze. We have beaten the polar bear. The terrible father. The neglectful father. But we have a second race with him later. In roughly like five minutes or so, we'll do a second race of them. He actually gives us, out of the ten jiggies in the level, he gives us three of them. And there's Waz of the Racist Walrus, who hates any and all animals except for walruses. <sighs> Hello, Muscle P. How are you doing? I am Nasfemi99. I do speedruns of quite a few games. But the thing that I grew my channel off of was Banjo Kazooie speedruns. I'm a little rusty at the moment because I've been focusing on 602 stuff, but I am also very tired. Working on Father's Day as a server is very draining. But uh, it's it's been a it's been a pretty good pretty good run. Nothing terrible, really. If anything, it's actually good. My PB is 223.40. And I believe I said it would take me around two and a half hours. So. I gave myself, I thought, way too much extra time, but it actually works out pretty nicely. Time to ban everyone. No. I encouraged it. Ban me. Ban it so I can no longer chat. I'm willing to bite the bullet on this one. What's up, awesome off, I think it was? How are you? That's also, I wanted to look at chat for something real quick, and that was one of the worst times I could have done it. Oh, okay. You have to know, that's the important thing. All it's nice, because we get some extra feathers at this part. Notes are the most important thing. What's 602 stars? 602 stars is basically the 602 
is a marathon that's held once a year and it's a big endurance marathon race where people who sign up race to complete the four main 3d mario games 100 percent in one sitting so basically you do super mario 64 120 stars super mario sunshine 120 shines Super Mario Galaxy 120 stars, and Super Mario Galaxy 2 222 stars. Back to back to back to back, all in one sitting. And it takes mm, a lot of people around like 30 hours or so. World record is, I think, just over 22 hours if I remember correctly. By 360 Chrism, who's at the, um, ooh. he's actually at the hack uh, event right now. I, don't, I think Chris had a run. I, I'm pretty sure Chris had a run during the event. It's 149. Yo, what's up, Echo? How are you doing? 149. That is not too shabby, actually. That's not too bad. Okay. We want to see if we can... Uh... Hopefully beat it maybe? We got one more race. It's a little more difficult because this race is actually shorter. It's the same track but we move faster. So we only do this one more time. And then mark. Get set. Go. What's up Carthel? How are you doing? So now we have 99 notes. I know what note I'm missing. We'll be able to get it on the way. But I think we're going to be short on Mumbo Token. Which honestly isn't that big a deal because I always, like I said, my Mumbo Token route isn't all that optimal. I always end up getting like two or three extra Mumbo Tokens. When does that more event happen? It actually happens the 25th of this month. So I saw Pineapple Pulp's name, and I read it like very quickly, and I thought it said something like Puppy, and I immediately thought of Milk of the Puppy. I was really confused why someone nicknamed themselves after basically <laughs> Morphine in Game of Thrones Morphine. Alright, we finished the race. We're done. We are done, 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 finished with this horrible, horrible creature called a Polar Bear. Um, now that we've beaten him, he has nothing left to race for, and now he will sit there as he succumbs to global warming. That's like, that's officially canon, you know, it says in the end credits. Some movies have those things where it's like the, the after movie kind of thing. It actually says that. You can trust me. We won't be able to see it because then we have to go to the next game, but it actually says it, I promise. Hey. So if you're looking right now, when I press the controller, we actually, I press B, but Banjo can't actually go into the surface. He can't swim right now. Because this section, you're actually not supposed to be allowed to swim. You're supposed to enter this area as the walrus. This is kind of an exploit. But by using the quick drop mechanic, we're able to enter this little hallway, grab this empty honeycomb, and then die. Wow! Banned. Friggin' permaband, Hustly, what a liar. I'm not 10 minute band, I'm permaband. It's uncalled for. You guys, can you guys believe this? I'm bringing fun and hype and different experiences to the chat experience. You know, it's it's like four, it's actually five in the morning where you guys are at, I think. I think it's five in the morning where you guys are at, and uh. And, and, and I brought quite a bit of activity to the chat and I'm being punished for it. Let's see, please. Why did I do that? Oh my god. Oh. I was on total autopilot there. Okay. I blame Hustly for that one. I was so heartbroken over Hustly timing me out there. Okay, so. Ah. Uh, Alright. That was my fault, I got distracted. So, we gotta go back. <laughs> we gotta go back. We gotta do this again. Okay. 
This is what I was supposed to do, but totally didn't. Because I was so heartbroken by Hustling. So this little jiggy, this is actually the Witch Switch that was in, I think, Mad Monster Mansion, if I remember correctly. We grab this one. We go back this away. Blame Hustly. Hashtag Blame Hustly. I, yes. Let's get it trending. Let's get at least just regional trending? Taylor trends? Let's do Taylor trends. Let's get hashtag Blame Hustly as a Taylor trend. And we do this. Boom. There's the other G. I was talking about. Where we actually don't have to hit the witch switch. Okay. So now we have Rusty Bucket Bay. Everyone's favorite level, right? Everyone growing up loved this level, correct? No one had any kind of negative associations. No one gets any PTSD or anything like that, right? Everyone loves everyone loves Rusty Bucket Bay, right? For the most part. <laughs> People are trying to sleep here. I mean, I, I feel like I've been pretty chill and quiet, right? Pretty relaxed. Blame Nestle. Okay, you know what? I agree with that. I agree with Blame Nestle. Not a big fan of them. Man. But Nestle makes everything under the sun. You guys ever seen that? Uh, what is the right word for it? I don't think it's the name for a graph. It's just like one of those webs. Kind of like back when you were... Remember when you were in elementary school? And they make you do those those little webs right before you did a paper? Where it had the central topic and then you have the, the webs branching out with all different subtopics. It's the same thing where it shows like, you know, Nestle and Coke and Pepsi and all the different companies and all the different products they make. Nestle makes everything... I'm like, oh yeah, I won't buy anything from Nestle anymore. I can do that. I don't want to support them. And then I look, I'm like, oh, this is 80% of what's in my pantry. Lovely. That'll make it easy to not support them. Ugh, this room's a nightmare. This room is a pain in the butt. And this room. Very difficult. Okay. That could have gone worse. That could have gone better. That could have gone worse. I'm looking, since I have FFZ, I still see the, the countdown timer for how long I'm banned on the channel. Rippy dippy. Okay. So I'm going to do some safe strats here. Because if I lose this, it loses like two minutes. Normally we actually jump while these things are spinning. We jump on there. Because when we do the jump, the second we land on it, if we jump again, you don't get knocked off. You just continue moving along on it. But it's very, it's not even that risky, it really isn't. But it still just happens sometimes. Everyone falters and makes mistakes and it's not fun. <laughs> it's not fun, you lose a lot of time. Because if you fall down here, it's an insta death. I'm just gonna make sure this is set up the right way. Okay, cool. It's one of the two jumps. We really only have one more risky jump that can end in death. That's right now, so. So, also, everyone, please, everyone's favorite jiggy in Rusty Bucket Bay was the propeller jiggy, right? The one that's on the back of the boat. You have to get this behind the propellers, you know, they, they stop and they slow down here. Everyone's favorite jiggy, right? Well, I'm going to show you, actually, a, a fairly easy way to get it. I think it's, it, it depends on, you know, who you ask, but I think it's a little bit easier than a normal way. So basically you just walk through that window. Um, that's step one. Step two is exiting out this ladder. And uh, now you're on the back of the boat. 
So it's completely up to you at this point. You could drop down and grab a jiggy if you want to. That's up to you. But we're doing a speed run. So I got to grab a couple extra things along the way. So I got to grab those notes. We'll get over here. There's four notes back on this thing. And then we got one more thing. We got to grab this cute little Jinjo. Who, you know, just is completely just invincible immune to everything can't die so he clearly needs to be rescued you can be submerged in oil water totally fine he clearly needs our help but you know okay grab the jiggy and uh 10 seconds to spare cool good i love that strat it's so fun it really is basically there's just a very small seam in between the glass window and the wall and if you push Banjo into it at a weird angle, he kind of just forces himself through it. Simple as that. But I'm pretty sure it's only like a one-way thing. I don't think if you're in the, you know, the, the room with the, the fan switch, I don't think you can actually, like, go back through it. I think it's a one-way thing. Oops. This is crazy. <laughs> if you think it's crazy, we actually have another really crazy thing coming up in a second. 80% of the human chemistry is a product of Nestle. What do you mean by that? It's a subsidiary of Coca-Cola. That sounds right. I could see that. But it's kind of like... Uh, I'm trying to think of a good metaphor example for it. It's like if I have two sons and my one son, Daniel, does like horrible stuff to horrible people. You don't want to support him. But my other son, Jeffrey, you know, he does great stuff. He's an upstanding fellow. Are you not going to support him because Jeff was a juice? There we go. That was also frame perfect. We grabbed the Jiggy at the right time. And we completely skipped that boss. It's a really cool glitch, but it kind of breaks my heart at the same time, too. Because there's only two bosses in this game. There's the final boss, you know, Grunty, and then that big boom boss box. Big... Boom box boss, sorry. And we skip them, which is really sad. But basically what happens is when you walk in the room, the jiggy's floating in the air. The jiggy's floating in the air. And when you walk within a certain proximity of it, the the boss will spawn. And when the boss spawns, it plays a little animation video. And after the video plays, the jiggy disappears in the room. And it'll only appear once you kill off, you know, the boss. Well, if when you enter the room, the boss is unboxed on the floor, and despite the fact that you know he's unboxed on the floor, he still has a hitbox. So if he can trigger that hitbox without walking into the vicinity of triggering the cutscene, it instantly spawns the boss. So what we do is we use eggs, a projectile, to spawn him into the room. And when you do that, when the boss is in the room, if you walk within that little vicinity, the game sees that the boss is in there, and as soon as they already played the cutscene, so it doesn't play the cutscene. Since it doesn't play the cutscene, the Jiggy stays free floating in the air. You could simply grab the Jiggy and then leave. And if you also grab the Jiggy on the same frame that you either hit the boss, either by attacking or him attacking you, you skip the animation. The little Jiggy animation, which I happen to do just there. Which is really nice. <laughs> Oh, also, <laughs> I don't think I mentioned this. This is going to make a lot of people's heads explode. Um, I'm playing Banjo-Kazooie on the N64, speedrunning it, and I'm currently speedrunning it on an HDTV. <laughs> so, yeah, let that sink in for a second. You know, you always hear talking people, you're like, CRT is the only way to go. When I first started speedrunning, I had no idea you know anything about input delay and crts and hdtv comparisons and stuff like that so when i started speedrunning this game i actually learned to speedrun it on this hdtv and it wasn't until like months later when someone was like what the hell are you doing playing on a crt i was like okay i'll look for a crt i'll look for a crt and i just kind of never got around to it then agdq 2015 rolls around and they had a, you know, private race. It was like, well, not private, just a race that was going on there uh, with some of the runners. And they had like four or five people doing a race. I was like, oh, yeah, I'll take place in it. 
And while doing the race, I was playing atrociously. I was messing up everything you could imagine. And I had no idea why. And, and it, it came to an end when I actually died in Treasure Trove Cove when I tried to jump up and grab the Jiggy, the last, and you know, the 10th Jiggy. But couldn't grab it, but I still died. Which meant I would have to go all the way back to Leaky and make him drain the water, spell out Banjo-Kazooie, grab the Jiggy, die, and then respawn. And I was like, you know what? I'm Out of the five people taking place here, I have the worst time as it is. I'm the least experienced. I just lost like three minutes. I'm going to call it quits here. I'm going to throw in the towel, fellas. Like, okay, that's fine. I'm wondering, like, what the hell did I do wrong? Why was I playing so bad? And then just connect it. Like, I, it just, I knew what it was. I was like, it was a CRT. That's what it was. I was not used to the input delay. I just, I got accustomed to what the HDTV has for input delay. And now, if I wanted to, I could figure out and practice some runs on CRT and get used to it that way. But, mm, not really worth it to me. Why are you the awful guy? You're the first person I thought of, Daniel. Hi. Please come, please come. Okay, we're good. Yeah, it's a very, very small thing. It, it's not... It's nothing major. From casually playing a game, you would never really know. You wouldn't know. If you were to... Introduce your friend to play Banjo-Kazooie for the first time in his life, he had never done it before, and you bring him over to your house and you pl plug it into your HDTV, and he plays it, you know, he'll be fine, he'll play it, and then, you know, you end up taking the console over to your house and, you know, playing on a CRT. He would probably notice it for like five minutes, like, wait, this is weird, this is weird on this TV. Within five minutes, he'd be back to normal and understand and figure out how to do it then. It's because you speedrun games and you do them so much and you learn the, the mechanics and the movement that the input delay or the difference in input delay between CRTs and HDTVs becomes very noticeable. Was in the wrong port? No, we weren't playing Smash. That's the only problem when we're playing Smash. Port priority is a thing. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. It is a thing. It actually is, though. It's been proven. But they, they have, like, drawbacks. I can't remember what it was. One makes it so, like, depending on the port you plug it in, one makes it so you can, like, grab slightly faster while the other one can, like block or like put up their shield faster it's something like super small and it's it's so small and it doesn't even make an impact and they kind of have trade-offs with each other but it's really funny right boss dog basically proof bias confirmation man it's a thing so yeah don't think you're bad at you know speed running if you're playing a game and you can't get a pb just understand that you were led astray. You were told wrong. Everyone told you to do CRTs when in reality, oh crap. When in reality, you weren't using HCT. That's the only reason. That's why. Uh, what did I say mad about me about Mad Bat? I didn't say nothing. Okay, so I'm gonna do this, get attacked by a very, <laughs> I never understood this, it's a life preserver, it's a piece of rubber filled with air, <laughs> it, it attacks you, and it's literally jumping on you, it doesn't have any, you know, hooks that it attaches to the wall that it swings at you or anything like that, it doesn't suffocate you, literally, an inflatable thing. A kid's pool toy basically jumps on you and it hurts you. Never understood it, but what are you gonna do? No, never. Yes. 
Snack up, please. I never understood why Snacker could be in that water. I like I know I know video game logic, but come on, there's 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 a line. There's definitely a line that you have to draw. He's he's a he's. If Banjo is losing air from being on the surface of the water, I'm pretty sure Snacker with gills can't stay submerged in the water and just be fine. It doesn't work like that. And then he pulls this Vaporeon stuff where he melts into the water and disappears. Like what is that? This jump sucks. Please get a first try. Nope. Oh, second try. I'll take that. Normally that jump, you're only supposed to be like coming down from it. You're not supposed to actually go up it. And it's a very tight window where you can get that jump. And it's not fun. Burn this one. Crack you later. A line. A line. It's a line. Do you have to do Cheeto 100% of this run? No. In 100%, you only get the 100 Jiggies, the 900 Notes, and the 24 Empty Honeycombs. You don't have to go to Cheeto anytime. You don't have to get all of the Mumbo Tokens. You do not have to collect all the feathers, all the eggs. You don't have to hit all the Witch Switches. The only thing you need is the 100 Jiggies, 900 Notes, and 24 Empty Honeycombs. That's all that's required. The other category which is not really all that that was really really bad that's not all that popular it's called max percent and you get all um static flag triggers so basically all the things i listed before you have to do okay so let's see um, 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 um hog breath parrot puke brown hog breath parrot puke clown Breath, pair of puke. Eight, that's not bad at all. Eight's pretty good. <clears throat> it's not bad at all. So, at the end of the game, there is something called Furnace Fun. Everyone's favorite thing. I actually enjoyed it. <clears throat> Casually, I really enjoyed it. Speed running, Furnace Fun can go die in fire. Actually, die in fire probably wouldn't work. I don't know, call the fire department on it. I don't know, I hate Furnace Fun is what I'm trying to get at. It sucks. There is a space in Furnace Fun called Grunty Spaces, which asks you questions about Grunty, the main antagonist. And every time that you play, it's the same 30 questions and the same three potential answers. But which answer it will be is completely drawn at random each time you load up the game. Actually, no, that's not true. It's drawn at random the first time you go into a room with Brentilda, the room with the fairy godmother. And basically why that is, is when you find her, there's 10 locations where she gives you three answers each location, and that gives you all 30 answers. And that's how you're supposed to figure out the answers for a casual playthrough. You're supposed to find her all over, remember, or write down the answers, and that way when you get to the quiz, you can give them the correct answer. But besides the fact, you know, it's a speed run, so we can't go out of our way to talk to her all those times. It's ridiculous to expect anyone to memorize all that stuff. So, you have two choices. You can either just pray as you mash the A button and hope the first answer is the correct one. Or you can download something called Furnace Fun Calculator, which is what I have, as well as many other runners use it. And it's a program where the developer spent quite a bit of time testing the most common ooh, patterns to pop up. And so when you enter in those three questions that I, uh, the three answers that was given to me right before I unlocked the clock wood, it narrows down the possible key from 256 different uh, possible strings to right now it's at eight possible strings. So when I get to Furnace Fun, it doesn't completely eliminate RNG, but it definitely narrows it down quite a bit. That's why we did that. In case you're wondering. That was really long-winded explanation, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I kind of just rambled for a bit there. So how about this music, though? God, so good. 
Three off ten. I haven't gotten a single one past Gobu since I got. Oh, it's okay. Oh, I'm. I'm so excited for ukulele. You have no idea. I I love Furnace Fun. Furnace Fun was really fun for me. I'm actually really excited because ukulele. That was one of the tiers was having a like quiz based game show at the end of the game so i'm really happy for it isn't that cheating no it's not it, that's why i always wondered how i was confused as to either a is it considered cheating or you know if it wasn't considered cheating would it be you know be looked down on would it not be considered <laughs> would it not be considered legitimate that was just really bad movement by me It is, I, I, after discussing, apparently quite a few people use it, and I got no problems using it myself. Okay, that was actually a really good split. Minus when I fell off in the water, that was a pretty solid split. Hard to believe Stave would be fighting Grunty right now. I know, it's crazy, Bacon. Uh, there's a couple things to take into account. One, Stiv isn't human. <clears throat> Stiv is just not human. So he's gotten really good at the game. But there's also the fact that B, he has a much more updated route than me. He has a much more updated route, which saves him quite a bit of time. But there's also the fact that this was definitely a very uh, not up to snuff run. I kind of figured this run wouldn't be all that great, but I did not expect it to have as many mistakes as it did. It wasn't anything really major. It was pretty much it was like a one minute time loss in most levels. It was something like that. Where it wasn't anything I lost like three minutes. But I had fun. I hope everyone has enjoyed the run up to this point. And uh, like I said, this is also a very old out of date run, so it's kind of a retro run in terms of route and strats so you won't really see this in any other streams that you watch the reason why i put off the why i still run these older retro strats is because i want to get a pb with these current strats because after furnace fun moves was found they had new strats which saved a bunch of time and i didn't i didn't want to use them right away because i felt that i wouldn't have gotten a pb because of my better you know more consistent or anything like that, it would have just been from time saving, it wouldn't have been as satisfying. Oh, what's up, Vesper? How are you doing? Will I take a, sp a break from Banjo Kazooie speedrunning with ukulele comments? Uh, and do ukulele speedrunning? I can't say I'm gonna speedrun the game because I haven't even played it, it's not out. Um, I, I don't want to promise to anyone that I'm gonna speedrun a game when it hasn't even been out. I might love the game to death. But I might not be a fan of how the movement is for it, so I'm not sure. There, but you know, it is Platonics. It's the same people who made Banjo and Donkey Kong 64 and Banjo 2, and I love speedrunning all of those games. <sighs> that was scary. So there's a good chance I probably will. But um, I will absolutely be streaming those games when they come out. Um, I've been taking a little bit of a break for Banjo as of lately. Just to try to prepare for the 602, but we'll see when the game comes out. It's been smooth. Luckily, remember to get the window. Yeah, that would have been great. To be honest, like for if I missed a note, everyone always likes to make fun of me because my name is not Spimmy99, and the reason why, and they say, oh, the reason why he has that name is because he always does 99% runs because it's not uncommon for me to go on autopilot or just you know, read chat for a second and miss a note somewhere. So I end up finishing the run with 899 notes kind of thing. There's also a very risky strat here that I actually just skipped and I'm not going to be going for because it is risky as hell. And it saves four seconds. It's not worth it. But the thing is, if I miss a note and I did a 99% run, it honestly wouldn't be all that bad. 
because all that happens is uh, when you go to the save file screen or like the choose file screen just says 899 instead of 900 it literally has nothing different now missing a jiggy that's a, that's a different story <laughs> That's a different story. You still only need 94 Jiggies in order to beat the final boss. But if you don't get all 100 Jiggies, you don't get the extended cutscene at the end of the game. Or, um... After the credits. Oops. Yes, no, Jimmy Nuzley. I do speed run Banjo Tooie. I just haven't done it for a little bit. I really love speedrunning Banjo-Tooie. It's such a fun game, and Banjo-Tooie is a much more ambitious game, so there's more to do in it, and there's more to collect in it. And that makes for much more, um, way more opportunities for glitches, and it's, in my opinion, I feel it's more entertaining to watch a Banjo-Tooie run. If, if you had equal knowledge about Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie, I feel like Banjo Tooie speedruns would be more entertaining, whereas Banjo Kazooie speedruns would be slightly more nostalgic, in my opinion. Like I said, I like running both of them. It's just that the Banjo Tooie community is much more quiet, just like physically. Um, a lot of the runners don't use webcam, and some of them really don't really use mic. Uh, the the most popular runner who has the best time does not use a microphone at all. And, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, that's his choice, but it's just generally the community, the people who watch those channels are much more reserved and quiet and don't really talk as much. And there's nothing wrong with lurking at all, but it's just that I thrive off chat activity and chat interaction. So when you stream a game where the entire community is like dead silent the whole time and, you know, you do streams really late until like one or two in the morning Eastern U.S. time, um, it definitely kind of wears on me a bit. So I love doing Banjo-Tooie streams. It's just I can't do them too much because it's a bit of a drain. So I see. I found Calm is Zero on Twitter. He's getting back to me. If he can't do this run, anyone practice this one? Ah, oh, I see what you mean. How long? A 90 minute, Ooh, holy cow, I was going to say if it's like a 45 minute thing, I might be able to do it, but now I'm just going to fish, no. Nope, couldn't even do 45 minutes, I don't have anything. The only other things that I run are like 10 hours. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. Donkey Kong, 101% is like, what did I get down to? I got down to just under 8 hours, I think. No, it's, you're just under, just under 9 hours what I got it to, I think. I can't remember. Ba -ba -da -da -da. Yo, what's up, Sam? How are you doing? What's up, Tiger? How was your guys' night? How was your Father's Day? Sam, did you get your dad something nice for his nest? Something shiny for it? Uh, we need to attack Gobi. We haven't been a bully to the animals in this area enough. Ask me about my sweeter. Is that what your name is based on? Or is it just coincidence? Because I love Accepted. That movie's so good. Oh my god, I haven't seen that movie in so long. I really want to watch it now. Ask me about my winner. To do an A plus run. See, the thing is, I actually really like those runs. I love doing long runs. Super Mario Galaxy speedruns are so much fun. So are Donkey Kong speedruns and all those because when you have these runs, like I, I, I ran Yoshi's Story for a little while, and the run is about like 20 minutes when you get a good time. So when you have these runs that are 20 minutes, it's much it, it's a shorter run, so it's much easier to get oh, totally forgot that asshole was here. Holy cow, that scared me. That really scared me, sorry. When you have these shorter runs, it's much easier to get a time that's way more optimized. And because of that, it's, you know, much easier to be forced to reset. You know, you make a mistake and 
they, they become much more costly. Whereas when you have these runs that are 10 hours or so, you can make like a five minute mistake even in some cases. And the run is so long, you have so much time to make up for it. I, that's why I really like those runs. And, you know, you can do the 10 hour run. And then, you know, that's a 10 hour stream you did there. That's a pretty awesome, you know, stream. That's a long time. Nothing to be upset about, you can cut stream right there. So I love long speedruns, both watching but also doing them. Dark Souls 3 speedruns, I'm pretty sure there's someone who does that. Whether they're in here or not, I'm not really sure. I still need to play the games before I can watch speedruns of it. Boldy and Kimo! Oh, we have so many awesome people in here now. I mean, we had some moderately cool people in here, but... Coolness percent shot up like 30. 30%. Some sandals? What do you... That's not what I meant to do. Sandals, what the? That's an interesting choice. I mean, if he, if he likes him, he likes him. But I guess I just think about it. I cannot stand wearing sandals. I hate them so much. Does he wear socks with them? Oh, holy crap. I was like rotating the camera with my thumb. And I, I pulled my thumb off, and I overcompensated and shot a little bit further on the controller, so I almost missed that jump and fell down. This level's really nerve-wracking. This level's amazing, it's gorgeous, it's so much fun, but oh, it's so nerve-wracking to speedrun. There's so many opportunities to fall off. Are they- are- is it a pink-flavored Starburst? Please tell me it's pink. No! There's no one here who gets that reference. It is based on that. Yes! I love when I get it. I missed the worm. I did miss the worm. I realized I didn't need to get him. <sighs> what are the notes at? What are the notes at? It is now 67. Okay. I'm trying to think where we're at. Hold on. Hold on. It's, not, it's not the end of the world. Hold on. I just need to think for a second. How many jiggies do we have? We need... We only need one more jiggy. So remember how I told you when you like fall and die, it's kind of a bad thing because you lose all that time. It does, you know, it kind of sucks. Um, I'm trying to think. Whoever... Where's the, uh, <laughs> where's the person who's on the channel because I can either, I can still get the run finished in the one hour and 30 minute time frame if they want me to. It won't be a 100% run, but I can still get it finished. Or I can do, I could still do 100% and get all the notes and then that will give them more time to find someone else to fill the slot. It's up to them. But it's up to you guys. What are we going up here for? Oh, I need to hit Gobi first anyway. Because right. we already fed Nabnut. He's good. He's taken care of. Hit boxes on the Any percent right now, please. You missed exactly what I said. So... I can still finish the run within the 90 minute time frame I gave you the uh, one or two and a half hour, or sorry, not 90 minute time frame. I could still finish in under two hours and 30 minutes if you want me to, or I could finish it 100% because of the, the death it will take longer than two hours and 30 minutes. But if you want, I can either just try to finish it by the two hour and 30 minutes, or I could finish it 100% and that will give you more time to find someone else basically. It's actually cool, because I get to show you guys a different glitch that you normally don't see. <laughs> uh, 
Who's worse, Nabnut or Boggy? Not even close, Boggy. I actually, Nabnut's one of the few people I like in this game. <laughs> I don't like many of the characters. I don't like them. Just, not even, like, I'm not even talking about design. I'm talking about personality and everything. Their, their aesthetics, just like... I, d I don't like them. I don't like most people in this game. <laughs> most of the characters. So if you look down there, because we had to reset, um, Naughty can't get back in his house because the boulder is back. So we're going to do this. Actually, got to do it a little closer. That keeps us... Okay. I'll do that. Oh, where is it? Oh, I got one of the eggs. We need to do another one. working? The... Come on. There we go. You can put the eggs on there. Get rid of the... And for some reason it switches the camera angle over there. So now he's not very happy right now. He's upset. He's chilly. You really wish he was inside his house. But his evil twin brother locked him out. ESA channels? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm assuming so, considering it's the ESA Marathon channel. Okay. So now we have the 25 Jiggies that are required. We have the 25 Jiggies required in order to get to ground team. And we're gonna head on over here. So normally we are I mean, to be short. Like six to be short. Six or seven. I can't remember the exact number. No, we're not that many. Actually, there are quite a few Jiggies you get in winter. So there was quite a few short. But basically, all that you missed was I was going to fall down the tree, uh, get the Jiggy that was on the flower, go into winter, get the Jiggy from Eerie, and two that are on like top of the tree, and that would be that. How about this old cow? Well, it's, uh, I think it's this one. Yes. I didn't quite read that one. <laughs> totally skin. Okay. Go with Valley. If you guys know the answers, just shout them out when you see it. Which of these can't be seen? I mean, shoes or Turbo Talent Trot. Good RNG. Third funnel. There is no third funnel. So we actually have to get these Joker cards. And we'll show you one in a second. Here's a grunty space. Okay, so don't fail me now, Furnace One Calculator. Warty Girls Weekly. Correct. Eggs. <laughs> Pretty much the answer. If the answer, if an egg is an option, 99% of the time, that's the answer. So if you see, the Joker card allows you to skip a space, and the mini game spaces are uh... oh that was asking in Goey's Valley. Whoops, I actually don't know this one. Is it six? It is six. Okay. Inside the igloo, not the igloo. More escape. So good RNG con. Flippets. Okay. Dude, not too bad. Come on, good RNG. Drink. Cold worm juice. Ooh, calculator's doing work right now. 
This is Rusty Bucket Bay. <laughs> What's up, Aya? You're a butt person? I'm not a butt person. Sorry. Oh! Inside Banjo the Squirrel's house. <laughs> that sounds really weird. I hate it when it combines answers. I hate it when it combines answers. It's the biggest troll ever. He is blue. Okay, so now we have something kind of scary. Where did I go to which school? Oh. Colgen College, that's the correct answer. Let's hopefully, I, I mean, it's not that hard, but, you know, there's always a chance of screwing up. That looks good. So the answer is Mad Monster Mansion. So we're going to say Rusty Bucket Bay. Cool, we did it. So, <laughs> since I have a minute, I can explain how that glitch works. Basically, what happens is, when you progress through Furnace Fun... It puts up borders around spaces that you have not completed. But on these spaces right here, if you get it wrong, it throws you off of the board into the lava to kill you. In order to do that, it has to get rid of the borders. And there's, I think, only two known instances where if you position yourself in a very specific area, um, you get thrown back onto the board. And since the borders are gone you can simply just skip right to the end and this is huge because normally what happens is when you answer the final question you have like a six minute like cutscene they have to sit through so you're not actually supposed to be here so we can do all this and hop right on through them and what's really great is banjo's sister despite the fact she's the little sister she's actually taller than banjo she's hunched over and she's still taller than him look that's actually what I'm saying. so okay time for the final boss fight Yes, I um, haven't speed run Banjo Tooie in a little bit, but I do know how to speed run Banjo Tooie, and I'm gonna go back and learn 100%. I speed run Donkey Kong 101%, and I debated running uh, Nuts and Bolts because I actually really like Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. I think it's a fantastic game, but I wanted to learn it with someone, and my friend was on the fence about it, but decided against it, so I decided not to. set of gut it's true it means that they're well fed and if they're well fed that's a sign of wealthiness i guess that's what it used to be i can't remember if that's still true Shut up. okay okay and we have the blue eggs now we have the final boss fight Dingpot, who helps us out because he's sick of Grunty washing her dirty clothes now. When does official ESA start? I actually don't know. I'm not familiar with it. Well, I mean, I am familiar with ESA, but I'm not familiar. I think it's... I could have sworn I heard September. Cool. That cackle. Way too early. Man, I started this run. I was so tired. Now I'm getting my second wind again. This, this is not good. I'm gonna be up so much. Uh, I was like, no, I'm gonna get some good sleep tonight. Go to sleep at a decent time, and I'll sleep good tonight. But I'm not going to bed at a decent time. Okay, one. Okay, cool, we got it. Not sure I was gonna get that. Three, cool, wow. Flying section is good. This flying section is, it sucks. If you mess it up, it's 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 really hard to recover from it and get it, you know, taken care of quickly. It's not all notes. It is all notes. I unfortunately got knocked off of the tree in Click Lock Wood. 
by one of the birds, and that killed me. And uh, since all the notes reset, I couldn't do it. Did we get it? Oh, it was perfectly angled. I was just a smidge too far. That sucks. Whoops. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Woo! Oh, okay. I thought I was so good with my jukes and I went back into it. We just have one more phase of the fight. <laughs> I got two overzealous in the gym. <laughs> what do you mean blaming the game? The, the game killed me. The bird killed me. That's the game, is it not? Like, wow, it's like... <sighs> Please, Chaos. Oh, this boss was so hard as a kid. Okay. So we have the final the final phase of the fight. We have the final split coming up in about 45 seconds or so. Whoops. Two twenty six thirty three. <laughs> Despite the fact that I skipped the entire last season <laughs> of Click Clockwood, I still finished plus two fifty three on my uh, my hundred percent PP. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, I hope you guys had fun. <laughs> I mean, it happens, right? Unfortunately, that's one of the drawbacks to Banjo Kazooie. It's a fun game. It's really awesome. It's really entertaining, but it is very, very unforgiving. If you make a mistake, it is. Uh, it's very costly. It's extremely costly. But... The big clucker. The big clucker. Yes, the big clucker. Not Kazooie. It's not like Kazooie failed to flap. Um, it was the clucker. The clucker killed me. I'm glad you had fun. Even if I didn't.